Welcome and hello. This is a video tutorial in HECRAS, and in this lesson, I'm going to be talking about geometric data. This is going to be an overview video. I'm not going to get into too many details about uh, the nuances of the geometric data interface. All right, this lesson is an overview of the geometric data. I will be sketching in a simple river system, adding elements, editing elements, deleting elements, and then also showing how to modify the different views and displays within the geometric data editor. All right, so if you're brand new to the whole geometric data editor window, this is a good video for you. Sorry in advance, my, my voice is a little bit scratchy today. No excuses, let's go. All right, so what I have here is a, a lesson, a file that I just created, I call it lesson three. Here is the project title and then the project file path to the .prj file. And then down here is the geometric data editor. So I'm gonna close that. I open that by just going edit geometric data and then boom, there it is. Also, you can open it by clicking on this button here, which opens the geometric data. Entering geometric data in HECRAS consists of establishing the connectivity, entering cross-section data, and defining all hydraulic structures such as bridges, culverts, dams, levees, and weirs, as well as any pump stations, storage areas, and two-dimensional flow areas. There are two different ways to add and edit geometric data in HECRAS. Now, the geometric data editor that we're going to be looking at in this lesson is the first way and the primary way, I would argue, a little bit more the traditional way. But there's also GIS Tools RAS Mapper. So you can go up to uh, GIS Tools RAS Mapper. This brings up the RAS Mapper interface, which is a whole separate interface. It has its own separate uh, user's manual. This is not what we're going to be discussing in this lesson. But just, just so you know, that RAS Mapper does exist. It's a little bit newer method, a little bit more GIS based method, as I understand it. However, the user's manual mentions that even if someone is using RAS Mapper for terrain data, they still need to return back to the geometric data editor right here to complete parameterization of the model. So as I understand it, um, the RAS Mapper interface is not a 100% standalone replacement for the geometric data editor. So go ahead and uh, open up your geometric data editor if you're following along. The river system schematic is a diagram of how the stream system is connected together. The river system is drawn in on a reach by reach basis. So what I have here is along the top, a number of different menu items. And then as you notice, we also have a number of buttons across the top and buttons down along the side. These buttons across the top have the title of tools and then the buttons down the side have the title of editor. So for instance, if you want to add a new storage area, you click on storage area, this button here to add new storage area, you add it. But then once you want to go edit that storage area, you can click on the edit storage area button over here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and sketch out a few reaches. This is not, a, the focus of this lesson is not on building, it's, but I do want to add a few elements to the map so I have something to talk about. So I'm gonna click on the river reach tool right here and then just sketch with uh, single left clicks. I'm going to sketch out a reach. So I'll just sketch something out sort of like that. On my last click, I'm going to do a double click that will tell HECRAS that I'm done with the reach. I'm ready to give it a river name and a river reach. I'll call it river A and I'll call it reach one and then click okay. I'm going to add a few more river reaches. So the next one down will start where the previous one and then I'll put it right like that and then double click again river A is what I'll call it and then I'm going to call this reach 2 so just like that the user's manual mentions that the length of the river and the reach is a maximum of 16 characters so if you happen to have a long name for a river name or reach name you may need to abbreviate it a little bit and then I'll click OK now what it's asking me here is asking for a junction name so because I started reach two, just where reach one ended off, it detected that vicinity and it's going to automatically add a junction point, which is great. That's what I want. I'm just going to call that junction one and then click OK. And then it's, it's just giving me a message here about the map extents. I'm going to be largely ignoring map extents in this lesson because I don't want to be focusing on coordinate systems or distance is too much. I'm just focusing on the general user interface of this geometric data uh, GUI. Okay, hang in there with me. I'm going to add a few more reaches. So this is going to be a tributary that ends at junction one. I'm going to call it river B, and then I'm going to call the reach tributary, and then click OK. 
and then okay so that's connected now what you notice on river b this tributary here has a flipped label so to do to fix that just single left click on the reach and then reverse river text and now river b label looks correct all right oops okay yeah so i want to save i probably should have um saved i can go file save i'll show that later but i need to save the file geometry that was just a habitual save whenever i think about it but i need to give the geometry file a title and the name is already automatic so you know for lack of uh, any creativity i'm just going to call it lesson 03 it's the same title as my project file like that and then click ok and what you see up here in the main GUI here that displays the files I'm working with is lesson three is the title for my geometry file. And then here is the actual path. The path is in my project one directory, which is in my uh, lesson three directory. So if I go there, it just created this file right here. Lesson, um, lesson three dot G zero one. I can open that up and take a quick peek at it. Probably not where I'm supposed to be messing around with, but it is nice to see that we have our three different reaches how they're connected and then individually it shows the reaches and the vertex points okay i'm going to add one more reach and what i'm going to do here is have a river c come intersect river eight reach two and what it's going to do is it's going to prompt me and ask me if i want to create a new junction with river b we already had a junction in place but if i show up with river c and put it right say here double click i first need to give that river c a name river c tributary okay and then what it's doing is you still want to split river a up reach two and the answer is yes i want it to be river a reach two and then downstream of that river a reach three so i'm going to click yes now it's going to prompt me for whichever reach i want to name this downstream most reach segment after the confluence with my river c tributary so i'm just going to keep river a in there and then say reach c and then this now it's asking me for the name of the junction so that's great so i'll just call it junction two and then click okay okay so let's make sure everything looks good there okay so we have uh junction two i spelled junction wrong no big deal and then reach c so oops i meant to call it reach three i can, I can go ahead and rename that in fact that's one of the things i wanted to talk about edit change name now i'm going to single left click on this reach c this downstream most reach of river a and as you noticed i don't know if you can tell but my cursor has a little dot t a txt label to it there we go perfect and now it's allowing me to change the river and the reach so i'm just going to call this reach three and click ok all right that's been updated i also want to flip this river c label so oops um, I'm still in the edit text mode, so I'm going to turn that off. Go edit, change text, so the checkbox isn't there. I just have my normal generic uh, pointer arrow cursor, and then single left click on the reach, reverse text. All right, just needed to clean that up. So I'm going to go file and then save geometry file that's updated. Say, for instance, I wanted to delete a reach or any other element. Let me go ahead and just sketch in a reach here, and then um, boom, I'll just call it reach delete okay if i wanted to delete this reach then i'd go up to edit delete and then select reaches now i'd select the river so river a gives me all the different reach options i have i'll just select uh, reach delete move it over and then click ok and then boom it's gone i'm going to add a couple storage areas here just to kind of have something else to look at i'll call this lake one and then let's do another leg downstream of that lake two okay that's fine so we can delete lakes just the same as reaches we'd go up to edit delete and then we'd select storage area slash 2d flow areas because these are storage areas i just sketched in and now i can delete lake one or two just like that goodbye lake two okay i'm gonna add lake two back in i feel kind of bad about that okay lake two is back Okay, there's a few other items in this edit menu that I want to talk about. We already saw change names. Next is to move points. So for instance, we have a vertex point on our storage area or maybe along the reach route that isn't quite in the correct location. Not a problem. We'll go move points or objects. And then we can just very, very easily select a vertex point and then click it and then move it. And then do the same thing. Maybe we're trying to make these lakes a little more circular. So we could just uh, move it like that. Also, the reach, they have vertex points, so I could move the reach vertex point by selecting it that way. The 
tool that I have enabled right now will remain enabled as long as the checkbox is here, which will be until I uncheck it by selecting it again, or if I select another option here. So for instance, if I want to add a point, I can click add point. And then like for the reach, for instance, what you want to do is click exactly on the reach. And then we can add another one. We can add one to our lake, for instance. And now to actually give it some shape, then we would select what we just did, which was edit move points slash objects, and then give that uh, move that point we just added. So boom, boom, something like that. All right, the last option in the edit menu of the geometric da data user interface is lines and symbols. If I select that, now I have a bunch of different options on ways I can change the view and uh, the symbology of the different elements in my map. Now, granted, this is a very simple geometric data I have laid out, so this is not comprehensive, but I did want to make a few changes just to kind of show you how it works. For instance, this first one here is the storage area edit, and right now it's just a blue line. But say, for instance, I wanted to make this line a little bit thicker so it may be easier to see. Then with this variable for schematic surface area edit selected, come over here to the right panel and we have the line, which is blue. That's good. That's what I want. The line width is only one pixel. So that would be right here. But maybe I wanted to make it four pixels. So we'll click OK. And just like that, we have our two storage areas have a much thicker perimeter line. So I'm going to change that back because that looks a little bit too much. I'm going to uncheck that first. OK. Edit. Lines and symbols. I got that switched back. Now let's go ahead and make one more change. Let's go with the junction. Let's make this a little bit larger because the, the little red dot there is kind of hard for me to see. So I'll go to edit, lines and symbols. Schematic for the junction right here. So it's not a line, but it's a symbol. So make sure, you, uh, make sure you're clicking on the right thing here. And then we'll stick with red. We'll stick with a circle. But then as for the size here, let's make this a 10. And then it gives you a little preview over on the left panel. That's cool. I'll click OK. And now the red junction circle is much larger and easy to see. OK, I'm just going to leave the junction as it is for now. I kind of like that. All right, something else that's really helpful, I think, as an engineer and modeler is to make measurements on the fly. So if you hold down the control key in the geometric data editor, here we have the cursor just switch from the normal arrow like this to the crosshatch measuring tool icon. And then what I can do is just single left click. And then with control still held down, I can just drag anywhere. So for instance, I would just let go control and then boom, it automatically tells me the length of the line I sketched in the area in the event it was a polygon, the vertex points of that line, and then a few other coordinates, and then a few other buttons as well to copy coordinates and so on. I'm not going to focus on this too much. But um, what I did want to mention is that knowing that distance can be really helpful. Granted, I mentioned earlier in the exercise that I'm not focusing on coordinate reference system. I think I started on a one by one grid or something really small. So the, um, the actual length of the units isn't particularly meaningful. But then this is not saved at all. So if I just click close, it, uh, it disappears. But I can do the same thing with the polygons. So if I wanted to know like the area of this lake, for instance, and it was actually sketched out to scale, I could just hold down control very quickly, sketch the perimeter, and then let go. And it gives me a pretty good estimation of that area. All right. So that's cool. Um, next up is the views menu here. So we can zoom in, uh, zoom previous, zoom out, zoom full, and pan. So I like to just zoom in using the middle mouse button, the scroller window. So, so if you roll it back, it zooms you out. If you roll it in, it zooms you in. View, zoom in, and then you can just kind of like zoom in on a certain area. If you want to zoom back to where you were before, that is view, zoom previous. You can also zoom out. Okay, I believe that's the same as view extents. So let me just zoom in a little bit. So view extents does something. Or, or full plot, excuse me, full plot right there. Okay, and then the other one was pan. So if I click on pan, now I have the pan hand. So this pan hand locked allows me to just um, move the, actually it works better when you're zoomed in. Okay, there we go. But what's, e what's nice is that you can just hold down the shift key. So I'm going to do that. I think it's easier than toggling on this option. So if you hold down the shift key, now the icon becomes the pan hand, and you can just um, move around like that. All right, next on the view menu is view options. So what we have here is a number of different options on how the um, display and the symbology of the geometric data is viewed. 
So this first box here is only about cross-section properties. I don't have any cross-sections, but you can read the user's manual or just kind of figure it out. It's pretty straightforward. For instance, with this first checkbox here, bank stations within the cross-section, this option displays the main channel bank stations on cross-section lines. And then the next one down, ineffective area stations. This option displays ineffective flow areas on the cross-section lines, which we could demonstrate with cross-sections. Storage area 2D flow um, area properties. So if I check this off, and then um, I should see the storage area no longer be filled in. Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to pan over. It's still filled in. Okay, when I started the next file, it, it updated, but it didn't update when I did it on the fly. So, oh well. Uh, the text is a big one. I can click this first tech check, text checkbox to display check text or not, and it will disable all the text. So I can turn all the text on, all the text off. I'm going to zoom out so we can uh, get a better feel for all the text. View, view options, and then here's all the text. Here's none of the text. If I wanted only certain text elements to show up, like the river reaches, the storage area, and so on, I can have individual control over that particular element type. Also worth mentioning on the view menu here is that there's this little mini map in the corner. So if I zoom in, for instance, and I wanted to reposition my view, I can just change my view by dragging the little red frame within the mini map. If you're having trouble finding a particular element, you can also go up to view find and then specify the type of element like reach for instance it would list all the rivers and then once you select a river it'll allow you to select a reach and then click ok it'll take you exactly to that reach now that's probably trivial in such a small schematic like i have here but if you have a large uh, diagram here and your geometric data or you're just new to the river system the model that you're working with that can be really helpful going view and then find there's also junctions storage areas, and of course, lots of other options that are currently disabled because they don't exist in the model. All right, last is to set schematic plot extents. This is basically the range of a plot. So for instance, this is my current view, but if I wanted to use the current view, I just select this button here. These numbers would update. If I wanted to use this computed data extents right here, which should include all of the elements in my model, I would click set to computed extents. And then if I click OK, then that updates like that. Also, I can make manual edits to that extent. So for some reason, if I wanted to include a little bit more area over to the left, I would click on view, set this plot extents, and then just make this left number a little bit larger. So maybe that. So that shifted over just a little bit. There's also background map layers. To display aerial imagery or terrain data behind the river system schematic in the geometric data editor, the user must use the HEC RAS Mapper tool. This was the RAS Mapper tool I mentioned at the beginning of the exercise. This topic is a little bit beyond what we're covering in this lesson, but we will cover it in the RAS Mapper lessons. Well, that was it for this lesson. We talked about the geometric data in general, some of the menu items, some of the buttons. We sketched out a very simple schematic here and talked about how to add and remove vertex points, how to move vertex points, how to change the view, and also change the symbology and the display of some of our elements here in HEC-RAS.